every day, everywhere, across New Zealand. From the smallest town to the biggest city. We have the finest tools. And expert advice. For any job. For any person. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? We are Nelson. Hamilton. Pukekohe. Rangiora. We are Trade Zone. We are Trade Zone. We are Trade Zone. Trade Zone. Proud to bring you Trade Zone Addicted to Fishing. I'm Nikki Sinden, and since I could hold a handline, I have been addicted to fishing. Whether it's stray lining for snapper, jigging for kingfish, dropping deep for harpooka, or jumping in and going spearfishing, I love it all. each week as I road trip around the country, travelling to both New Zealand's most iconic fishing destinations and stepping off the beaten track to show just how good Kiwi fishing really is. Whether it's a girls trip, fishing with a local or riding solo, I am on a constant quest to satisfy my insatiable fishing addiction. This week on Trade Zone, we're doing something a little bit different. Normally we go out and we catch a whole heap of fish, but this week we've taken one snapper and we're going to share with you all the tips and tricks on taking care of your catch, making the most of it, tips on how to process and cook your fish in some very, very different ways. So come with us. Hitting the water and targeting one of New Zealand's favourite table fish is a pastime that a lot of us cherish. Whether you're a guy or a girl, fishing from boat or from land, the mighty snapper is our nation's sacred fish. The opportunistic feeders that put up a good fight and the feeling of winning the battle with one of these big bruises is second to none. It smiles for miles and the energy is at an all-time high when a big snapper graces our presence. So let's take just one of these prize fish as I share with you how we can utilise every single last bit of it. So the reason that we want to make sure that our workspace is so nice and clean is because we don't want to have to wash our fillets at all. Um, washing them and putting them into water means that bacteria grows and that's not what we want. So we're going to start with a nice clean workspace. Good quality knife. Cannot stress enough how important that is. We caught this fish yesterday and I like to keep my fish on ice overnight because it sets the flesh. All right, here's our beautiful specimen. So not one part of this fish is gonna be wasted, even the scales. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna descale our fish and we're gonna keep the scales, we're gonna wash them and we're gonna give it to one of the kitties so that they can stick it onto their art projects. So we're gonna start by descaling our fish using the back of our knife. So we wanna try and get the most meat off this beautiful snapper as possible. So I'm gonna show you how. We start by going up underneath the wing, bit of an angle up towards the head, down that centre line. Then we're going to come back up the top, slide our finger down and run the top sort of inch of your knife hard against the bony area here. And this is why I like to put my fillets on ice. It makes this process a lot easier. Actually going to cut up and over the rib cage. Peeling it away slowly. Yeah. There it is. Beautiful, nice big fillet. Now I've chosen to leave the belly flaps in there because we're going to show you how to cook them too. You. Next, we're going to take you through taking the skin off. So I've made an incision like that. I'm actually not going to move my knife. I'm just going to have it on an angle and I'm going to wiggle the fillet towards me. So here, we have our skin. I can't wait to cook this up. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take out the bones. Carefully as possible, you just run your knife slightly towards you, just feeling your way. And we're gonna, we're even gonna use this part here. None of this fish is gonna go to waste. Now this here is 
one of my favorite little tips for you guys. Grab a bowl, put it upside down in your container. So that means that our beautiful fillet stays fresher for longer because it's not sitting in its own liquid. Next, we remove the guts of the fish. I'm just gonna go up in between the wings until I hit the bone there. Oh, he's been munching on some kinna. And I have a use for these, so I'm gonna put them aside. And I've grabbed some snips to cut the cartilage at the base of the jaw, which gives me the gills in one clean piece. Now, we're gonna take away the beautiful wings, belly flap area. It's gonna be so tasty. Right, so now we're just gonna make an incision down the middle, and then we can actually pull those wings apart. Look at that, yeah. Beautiful area, this one. Just feel around for in the cheeks. So you just get a slightly smaller knife. I love doing this on harpuka, bass, blue nose. Oh, goodness. That piece there is going to be absolutely divine. Do it from the other side too. Just feel around so it's in here. And I want to get every last little piece. Comes off so nice and easily. Okay, so now we're going to disconnect the head from the body. I like to use these Rapala scissors, but you can actually use a knife or kitchen scissors, whatever floats your boat, but it can be a bit tough to get through that spine, so here we go. And we're going to take this delicious head and we're going to turn it into something else. After the break, I share some easy and tasty recipes and show you how to make the most from one fish. This week we're focusing on the mighty snapper, arguably New Zealand's favourite table fish. Not only do they put up a mean fight, but they're also accessible to most Kiwis and they taste epic. This recipe is one where you can take a fillet of a fish, obviously today we are using snapper, and you can make it go a lot further. Um, I like to make this one, especially when we have guests come over, because it's quite nice to sit down together and have a bit of a nibble. This is snapper crostinis. Super easy and simple to make. We've prepared a few things here. Um, firstly, I've got a French stick, chopped it up, made some garlic butter, put it on there, and we're just gonna grill it. All right, so while they are going nice and crispy, we're gonna take our snapper, we're gonna season it with a whole heap of salt and pepper, and we're gonna give it a quick fry. Just got it on medium heat, and I'm gonna add some oil, just a little bit, and then we're gonna add our beautiful snapper. And I've cut this up into nice, thin, tiny little pieces. We're gonna give it a quick flash fry. And I'm gonna give it quite a generous seasoning of salt and pepper to really bring out that beautiful fishy flavor. Because we've cut these up into such small little pieces, it doesn't take very long to cook. And it's definitely ready to come out. Beautiful. Beautiful, that's just cooked. Okay, so we're just gonna let that cool down a little bit. And in the meantime, we're gonna start making the rest of the meal. Okay, so we've just got some mayonnaise here, but I like to use best foods. Favorite. And we're going to add some avocado. Please be a good avo. We'll give this a bit of a stir. And then we're going to add some coriander. You don't have to add this. If you're a big fan of parsley or thyme, you can put that in instead. Then I'm just going to grab some capers and put them in as well. Give them a bit of a squeeze so that we don't bring that water in too much of it. Put another nice bit of mix up. Yep, that's cooled down enough. Add that to our mixture. I've probably used half a fillet. Two thirds, maybe. Maybe, a stretch. So as you can see, adding it makes it go a lot further. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble. So just grab some of your baby rocket. Then you can say that you had your greens. Press it down and put a big scoop of our mixture on top. I just kind of scrunch up the, the baby rocket, press it down, nice big scoop, slide it on top. 
I'm not sure how we're going to eat all of this. It's just my husband and I here, and my cameraman doesn't actually eat fish, would you believe? All right, well, we're nearly finished. We're growing my own microgreens. We're just going to snip off a few of those. And just to be a little bit fancy, we'll just... So you can add whatever you like to the mixture. I mean, you can put a bit of red onion, you can put some chilli, you could even put uh, some capsicum, all that sort of stuff. The world's your oyster. Well, there you have it, guys. Eat your heart out. Snap across teenies. So my friend Marlon came and got the scales off me, and it looks like he's just bought them back. Hi, Marlon. Hi. Hello. What have you done with the scales? I made a picture. Did you? Wow. Hey, that's a pretty big snapper. That looks like a 20 pounder, if you ask me. <laughs> have you caught one like that before? Have you? Yes. <laughs> Every day, eh? Every day. <laughs> what a cool way to use the scales off a snapper. Looks like you've worked really hard on that. Thank you so much. Your parents have named you quite possibly the coolest name in the world. <laughs> your first name is Marlon, and your middle name's Hunter. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Tackle Tips and Tactics, brought to you by Smart Marine. So today I'm going to share with you how to maintain and look after your PFDs so that if you do get into trouble, you know that you're going to be fine. So these are the ones that we use. These are the inflatable ones that you just pull the tab here and they inflate when you have an emergency. But we want to make sure that the canister is all good. So you just open up the side and go into this little yellow pouch here. And see this here, this canister? There's two things we're going to check. Firstly, we're going to check that this is not punctured, because if it is, then we're going to have problems. And the second thing we're going to check is the expiry date. It's just printed on here. And this one in particular that I'm showing you is out of date. So if you want to go to Smart Marine and buy a new canister, they will take care of you. The second thing that we're going to check is the buckles, because this is a part that can sometimes uh, break. So you want to make sure that you've got all perfectly working parts in case of an emergency. For all your fishing needs, head on down to your local Smart Marine store. After the break, I share my Japanese KFC fish recipe and we make sure all the fish is cherished. This week we're talking about the almighty snapper, a welcome catch at the end of the line. It could be considered as our nation's fish and we've taken just one snapper and are sharing how to utilize all of it. So this is our snapper skin croutons, which we're gonna later add to a salad. All we do is we add a bit of olive oil. I just do it with my hands, to be honest. Just sort of make sure it's well coated. Then we're gonna generously apply salt and pepper before we bake this in the oven. Now these are gonna shrivel up Similar to crackling, and then we're going to chop it up like croutons and put it into the salad. Right, these are ready for the oven. Right, so we've got them baking at 180 for 15 to 20 minutes until they go really crunchy. While that's sizzling away, I throw together a salad, which my family call a motiri salad. It's got all the good stuff in it, like cherry tomatoes, toasted pine nuts, red onion, and of course, lots and lots of avocado. All right. So I'm just chopping them up into nice crunchy little pieces. And then when they cool down, you add them to our salad. And then we have a beautiful fresh salad with crunchy snapper croutons. So now we're going to take the head and the frame and the tail and we're going to turn it into some beautiful, nutritious fish stock. First things first, let's add eight cups of water. Then we're going to add a whole chopped up onion, which gives it some beautiful flavours. Then I've got a couple of bay leaves and some fresh peppercorns. And 
gonna give it a nice big stir. And I'm gonna put it on to simmer. I'm gonna start with it on high, and when it starts to boil, I'm gonna put it down to low, and we wanna boil it for about 20 minutes, scraping off any foam that happens. Then, we're gonna run it through a sieve. Making a fish stock is a great way to add a bit of nutrition uh, to whatever it is that you're making. We've added fish stock into pasta, sauces, even dips, um, soups. It's just another way to get those nutrients in there. Right, so that's looking nice. I'm just gonna strain it. Getting rid of all the bits and pieces. Well, that smells delicious. You can really smell the bay leaves in there. And as that cools, it'll start to gelatinize. Now I'm gonna pop it in the freezer and pull it back out when I wanna make a soup. So these offcuts from the snapper, I like to freeze them into lots that I take out each week for my cat. Free cat food. Right guys, you're about to find out why they call me Nikki Greenfingers. Watcha! This is my garden. Right, so I love feeding my garden full of nutrients. So every time that I get a fish, I put it in here and you wouldn't believe, but within probably a week, this garden has just soaked up and disintegrated all of the guts and things from the fish. And you know what? I think that's wicked. This is a twist on a traditional Japanese dish, karage chicken. Today I'm gonna to share with you how to make karage fish. So what we've done is we've taken some of our fish and we've chopped it up into uh, cubes that are about, I don't know, just over an inch thick as it is wide. And then I've marinated it for a couple of hours um, with soy sauce, equal parts soy sauce and sesame oil. You whisk it together and then I've added some fresh ginger and some fresh garlic. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an egg to that mixture, a whisked egg, before we take it through the flour and corn flour mixture. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add the egg to the fish. Just gonna give it a bit of a mix through. Completely coating it. So this mixture here is equal parts corn flour and flour. I'm just going to dredge a beautiful tasty fish through it. Mmm, I can smell the garlic and the fresh ginger. Would you look at that? Beautifully coated, now we're gonna deep fry. Right, so I'm gonna test that my olive oil is heated up enough just by flicking a little bit of uh, water into the pan. In she goes. So when you're frying your fish, you can use any kind of oil that you like. I enjoy using olive oil. Just because I think it's better for me, but totally up to you. You can use canola oil, grapeseed oil, whatever floats your boat. I like to fill up my fry pan about that high. You can do more or less. Um, totally up to you, but that's just what I do. We've got it on a low heat uh, because olive oil has a high smoke point when it's up high. And we want to cook our fish quickly but we want to cook it through enough so that the moisture doesn't make the crunchiness outside go soggy. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Oh, so we're just going to take these ones off the heat now. And we're going to put our first batch back in. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it's something to do with uh, letting it cool down slightly, like the batter on the outside, it cools a little bit and that means that it has the opportunity to go a little bit crunchier. But that's what they do with karage chicken, so that's what I'm gonna do. Right, 
Right, so these are ready to come out now. So now we're just gonna plate it up. Might need some help to eat this, guys, because it's just my cameraman and I, and he doesn't eat fish, so. Yeah, the game changer. QB mayo. And a bit of coriander for good measure. There you have it, team. Good argue fish. Here we have our barbecued snapple wings. And I've saved the cheeks for the barbecue as well. I like to make my own homemade rub. Decent amount of chili. Some paprika and some garlic powder. Pretty sure these are some of the main ingredients in KFC, but who knows. Then we're just gonna add some salt and some pepper. If there's some other flavors that you guys are really, really passionate about, feel free to chuck it in. There's not really any rules when it comes to making a rub. It's good to go. And firstly, we're just gonna brush the wings with some oil. We're actually gonna rub the skin. Get that flavor everywhere. So then we're just gonna flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Now we're gonna take them outside to the barbecue. So we've heated the barbecue up to about 200 degrees and I'm gonna start with the meat side down. All right. So these beautiful tender cheeks aren't gonna take very long, so just keep a little eye on them. Oh, these bad boys look delicious. Ew. So check out all that beautiful tender meat. How awesome is it that you can utilize one fish, make all those dishes and not even waste a single part of it? That's it from us at Trade Zone Addicted to Fishing. We'll see you again next week. Gear, care and catch. Brought to you by Trade Zone. So today we're just going to have a bit of a chat about a few different products here at Trade Zone. Umaru, what have you got for me, Jace? Um, well, we've got abrasives and grinding discs and stuff here today. So we've got the Flexivit 125 cutting disc, which is great for cutting out steel and doing your general jobs. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the wrapper strip disc, which is good for removing scale and paint jobs. You know, get ready for prepping for paint. We've got the BTX pads, which are good for polishing stainless steel and clean oxidation of aluminium and fiberglass. We've also got the Blaze flap discs. The ceramic just cuts faster, lasts longer, harder wearing. Yeah. They come in. Zirconia ones as well, which is just a different grade. Thanks, Jace. Well, there you have it, guys. If you're looking for anything to do with fabrication, come on down to your local trade zone store. Cool. I've got to go fishing. Catch right. you later. OK, have fun. Cheers. See ya. Bye. For all your engineering needs, head in store or order online at www.tradezone.co.nz. Check out our YouTube page for tips, tricks and entire episodes of every season. And like us on Facebook to keep up to date with competitions and all your fishing news. Trade Zone Addicted to Fishing is proud to be with Extreme Boats, powered by Honda Marine. We tow it around in our custom-built G-Fab trailer on the back of our Mercedes-Benz V6. When we're not out on the water, it's all stored away in our BuildLink kit set shed. Smart Marine supply us with our Shimano Tackle and we find the best fishing spots with our Raymarine. We finish the job thanks to trail trades and move in precision thanks to Seastar. We maintain our gear using 10 tools and we keep up to date thanks to New Zealand Fishing News Magazine and it all keeps performing thanks to Trade Zone.